Hey there, welcome to the Electronics channel. I'm Dave Williams. In this video, I am going to do an example where I calculate the efficiency of a class B amplifier. Specifically, I am going to calculate the efficiency of this class B amplifier that has a three volt peak input sinusoid and that is split to the base of transistor one and the base of transistor two. You'll notice that I have this biasing resistor between the two bases. This biasing resistor is not enough to, to, to make this a class AB amplifier. It's enough to reduce the crossover distortion by a little bit. Now here's the class B amplifier part, the BJT circuit part, and then the load is connected to the emitter of the two transistors. And in this case, I have a load resistance of 10 ohms. And then overall, this circuit is powered by an 8 volt DC source. Efficiency is given by Greek letter eta, and that's equal to the output power divided by the input power times 100%. Okay, let's, let's refresh ourselves and what's happening with the input power to start with. So a couple of things that we need to remember with the input power. The input power is going to be equal to the voltage from the supply, so I've called it VDC here, but this is also VCC, times the current provided by the supply. That's ICC, so that's the current provided by the supply here. And that ICC is composed of two parts. ICC is going to be composed of the base bias current. So that's this current here, plus the average collector current, so that's going to be this current here. Well, that's the collector current, and I want to know the average of that current. This is going to be very small. It's basically the 8 volts divided by this resistance. And that resistance, because in this circuit that resistance is so big, it's 200.1 it's, uh, kilo ohms. That's going to be in the order of around 40 microamps. IC average is the current here, and remember that IC average, it's a half-wave rectified signal, so it's the peak current divided by pi. And in this circuit, we won't have clipping because my input voltage is a three volt peak signal. The maximum output that I can have is a four volt peak signal. So with a three volt peak signal, I'll have a three volt peak output, approximately. There'll be some diode drops in, in there, but let's, let's approximate that as a three volt peak output. So that three volt peak output to give us the peak current will be 3 volts divided by the load resistor, which in this case is 10 ohms, and then divided by pi. And that works out to 95.5 milliamps. And 95.5 milliamps compared to 40 microamps, well, that's essentially zero, so my ICC is my IC average, approximately anyway. And then putting all this together to calculate my input power, P in is VCC of 8 volts, times 95.5 milliamps, which equals 764 milliwatts. The output power, so that's the, uh, that's the power dissipated across the 10 ohm load, is going to be whatever that output is in RMS squared divided by the load resistor. If we're doing this in, P, in terms of the peak voltage, which we were for the, for the input power, that's going to be the V out peak over root two squared over RL. And I can, I can simplify this and I get the V out peak squared over two RL. Plugging numbers into that, well, since the input's three volt peak, the output's going to be approximately a three volt peak. So it's going to be three volts squared over two times 10 ohms. And that works out to 450 milliwatts. So now I've got an input power and an output power. I can take those two numbers, plug it into my efficiency equation, and I get 450 milliwatts over 764 milliwatts times 100%, which gives me an efficiency of 58.9%. So 58.9% of the power coming in is actually used by the load resistor. 
Now, if you remember what the maximum efficiency can be for a class B amplifier, you will notice that this is less than that maximum efficiency, which is 78.5%. And the reason it's less than that maximum efficiency is because the output voltage across the load is less than the maximum voltage that it can be. The maximum voltage it can be is, is restricted by this source, so it's going to be around 4 volts peak. But my input's a 3 volt peak, so my output will be approximately a 3 volt peak because the gain of this amplifier is approximately 1. Now I'm making a few assumptions there, but that's the general principle. So hopefully you can take this and apply it, apply the idea to other Class B circuits. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.